What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another Vegas Pro 17 tutorial for you. Today I'm going to be showing you Vegas 17's built-in screen recorder. All the footage you see of my desktop and the program itself is going to be recorded using Vegas' screen recorder itself. I'm going to show you the ins and outs of it and the pros and cons of it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. I want to start this off by saying Vegas does not record your mouse. So if you are recording and you're trying to do a tutorial like I am right now, you're going to have to put a lot of arrows and add extra things on because you're never going to be able to see where my mouse is, unfortunately. Okay, so we have Vegas 17 open. Now let's go ahead and start recording. You can do this a couple ways. On your taskbar, you have a quick option to say start screen capture. You can either do that or you can go to file and then down to screen capture. When you do that, it'll bring open a Vegas capture window and it's going to have everything checked by default. This window is resizable, but you really won't need to. It's going to detect all of your monitors and all of your active audio sources, input and output. Now, after a lot of tinkering, I could not get it to detect any input from my input devices. This is my main one, Microphone 2 Scarlett. We can clearly see right here that it is detecting wavelengths, so we know my audio source is working. And then if we go over to Vegas and we right click and go to Audio Track, Aim for Record, and we could clearly see it's detecting my audio right here as well. But inside Vegas, it just does not detect it right here. But that's just input. It does detect output. So if you're playing a game or if you're playing music or something, it will record it on your output. So I'm gonna show you an example of my speakers if I test them. It does in fact capture audio. But as for lack of input capturing, that one's pretty rough. So back to this screen. If you want to record something, make sure there's a checkbox right here. If you don't want to record it, just select it and it'll uncheck it. So you can click on whatever monitor you do not want to record. Same goes for audio. You can just select and unselect what you do not want to record. Now if you right click on audio, you'll get a few options, but it's just labels and levels and resets. There's no extra options for audio here. In video, if you right click, you don't get any extra options either. You can only just left click things. Now let's go down to the settings right here. If we open up the settings, we're going to see not much options. We have themes and minimize locations. That's it. We can't control bitrate. We can't control resolution. So it's pretty much hard coded in how Vegas is going to capture everything. Now, speaking of that, I have three monitors right here. These top two are 1080p monitors and this bottom one's a 4K. So whichever monitor you have selected, it's going to record in that resolution. You can't add monitors during mid recording. You can only select what monitors and audio sources you want to record with before you hit the record button. And that's all that's going to be captured. So if I select my middle monitor, which is a 1080p monitor, it's going to record in 1080p resolution. The bitrate can range anywhere from 1 to 6 megabits per second, and the frame rate is at a set 30 frames per second. I have not been able to figure out how to change this, which kind of hurts because a lot of people, myself included, like to record in 60 frames per second. Now before you record, you can select multiple monitors, and it will record all three of those, but it's not going to record them into one video file. It's going to record each one of these screens as separate video files, so it's not going to be one long screen you're going to have two 1080p files and one 4K file, or whatever your monitor is. So let's look down here at these options. We have this button right here that says automatically imports all capture media files into your open or new Vegas project. So once you've completed recording something, if you select this button, it's going to automatically import it into Vegas's project media, and it's going to put it on your timeline. So let's go ahead and look and see where Vegas saves these files to. Vegas automatically creates a captures folder inside your user folder. You cannot change where Vegas captures this. It's always going to be here. So if we go to captures. If we look at my path, it's usually in C, users, your name, and then captures. That's where they're going to be. And it's going to automatically sort them in a big random number folder. You can't change the name of that folder either. Again, this really hurts when you can't do some basic features like that. So I'm going to minimize this. So on to the next option. We see a little floppy disk here and logically you think, hey, that's telling me where I can select a directory for my files to be saved. But in fact, it actually is a directory chooser for a type of project file, and they create these files called VegCaps, Vegas Capture Files. And what these files are supposed to do are supposed to import your Vegas captures into your timeline. But I have not found a use for it. I've tried importing it into the timeline and nothing really shows up. So I'm not 100% sure what exactly the point of a VegCap file is. It's now onto the record button. Now on this screen over here, 
I'm currently recording my monitor using Vegas' capturing right here. So you can run multiple captures at the same time. That's perfectly fine, which is a pretty nice feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and record my middle monitor. We're gonna look at some details. Okay, so I'm recording it now and I'm moving things around in circles and I'm dragging things up, down, trying to create some pixel changing on the screen, you know, kind of amplify it up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. I'm gonna minimize this, minimize this, and I'm gonna open up Media Info. Media Info is a free software that lets you really dive deep into these video files and what they all contain and their extreme details that you can't normally see. So I'm loading up my captures folder and this first one is my current screen recording capture that I'm doing this whole tutorial on. So I know this next one is my current capture that I did. So we see my video file and my audio file. I'm gonna drag my video file into here and then go to view and change it to tree. And then we're gonna see all the details. I'm gonna drag it open and here we go. So the length was 18 seconds and it made it 10 megabytes. The overall bitrate looks like it's just at five megabits per second. The format is AVC, very common. We can see it records in a main profile. The codec is also AVC. Bitrate, 4901 kilobits. We see it's 1080p. Aspect ratio is 16.9, of course. Frame rate mode, constant bitrate instead of variable bitrate. Frame rate 30. Color space YUV, all normal stuff. And that's pretty much the details of that. Let's go ahead and try recording again, but this time 4K. Open up Vegas Capture, uncheck my middle monitor, and check my left monitor. And I'm gonna hit record. So I'm gonna stop recording it now. And if you keep the same session open, then it keeps on adding video tracks in the same folder. Now, if I were to close this session and bring open a new Vegas Capture session, it's gonna create a new folder right here. So I have my 2.0, which we see if we open up Media Info, drag that in here, 2-0, view tree. We can see that it's 20 megabytes, 26 seconds, means the overall bitrate looks about 6,500 kilobits per second. Everything else is the same, except for resolution, that is 4K, 30 frames per second. Everything else is identical to the first one. So let me go ahead and show you an example of recording multiple monitors at once. If we select all three of these monitors, hit record, you can see that it creates new files. Now it kind of put them out of order. Now I'm not really understanding the numbering system because that was my first one, that was my second one, the 4K, and then this one, this one, and this one got created, which is, you know, pretty weird. I'm gonna stop these, and there we go. My files are created, you know, pretty short and sweet, pretty simple, 0-1, 1-0, and 2-1 not understanding why it named it that way. But you can't change it, unfortunately. So I'm gonna drag these files into Vegas. We'll take a look at them. So there we go, we see them, and that's it. There really isn't anything more to say about this screen capture. It's simple, it does what it says it does to a decent degree, but it's not as customizable as some free software out there, you know, like OBS Studio. It's a step in the right direction, and it's cool having this feature built in, like let's just say you don't have access to the internet and you can't download anything else, bam, you got yourself a screen recording software built in to your video editing software, so it's convenient, but it's not the best. So my overall rating, if I were to rate this thing on a star scale, I'd say it's probably a solid two out of five simply because you cannot control a lot of the details like people like. You can't control the file type, which it's MP4, which I'm not opposed to. MP4 is my, one of my favorites, but you can't control certain audio things. You have lack of settings. You can't control frame rate, resolutions. It's kind of just like what you see is what you get, and I'm not a big fan of that. And there you go. You now know how to use Vegas' built-in screen recorder. If it's for you, go for it and use it. If it's not, there's plenty of other options as well. I just want to let you know that it exists and that it is an option available to you. If you like this video, be sure to go down here and maybe hit the like button or even the subscribe button. I'm really close to 10,000 subscribers and once I hit that, I'm going to be giving away a free LUT pack for all of my viewers. If you know my channel exists, you'll know you'll get a free LUT pack. So thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next video. And I also want to thank all of my scrappers, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Walter Heenan.